right, let's talk about your typical Volkswagen oil leaks. There's a lot of different engines that you can have in one of these things. So uh, different ones are going to have different issues. Um, and I thought I would just make a video kind of about some of the generic oil leak issues that you might have and maybe how to fix those things. Now, if you look under your car and you see a couple drips like that, um, you know, I've got news for you. It's pretty much the way it is. Every once in a while, you can have one that doesn't have any oil leaks at all. It's completely dry. You can keep it from leaking. And then some of these cars, no matter how much you chase it down, it's just going to leak. So anyway, we'll just talk about some of the more common ones, the things that happen, and how to fix them, and some of the ideas you can use to fix some of your oil leaks. So possibly to help you um, to figure out where these things are, I've got an engine apart here. This is a junk engine pretty much no good um, and some of the most common ones are things like the oil cooler seals the crankshaft seal that's on the end of the crankshaft your push rod tube seals they go on here sometimes you'll have a little bit of a oil leak from these areas if you notice on the green bug it's leaking a little bit here sometimes it's a little harder to fix sometimes the o-rings the o-rings they sell you they don't seal very good and you just get leaks there another really common area especially on the later model engines like this this is a 40 horse case if you have like a 1600 the early cases especially would have cracks in the back here so usually if there's a case crack it's usually somewhere in this area um, see this is your oil gallery or galley and it, and it uh, can crack somewhere in there so what they do on some of the engines, they have a block that goes on there and that eliminates some of it. Some of them they actually weld the block in. Some of them have a factory block in there and some of the aluminum cases pretty much don't leak. So let's talk about them one at a time here usually. Uh, like, let's say if you see the top of your engine, you know, somewhere if you see like where your fan shroud is, let's say right here, you start to see oil like coming around here and you see a a lot of oil leak dripping on the ground a lot of times most of the time that is the uh, seals here for the oil cooler or sometimes every once in a while the oil cooler cracks I mean there's a million things that can go out on VW these are old cars but usually it's the oil cooler seals that are here they get rock hard and uh, they just start to leak so uh, there are I think three different ones there's green ones, there's red ones, and there's the black O-ring style, little like little sleeves that you put in there, little rubber sleeves. And depending on what the year model is, the case you have, see if you have a late model case and you've got an early cooler, then you probably need like the green ones uh, where they have the two different sizes on them. So the best thing to do is to fit them in the hole and kind of move them around a little bit and make sure that it fits properly and get all three or three or four different types. I think there's white ones too, and I'm not sure. I think the white ones are for the 36 horse. I don't remember them all. Uh, I usually go to the Volkswagen store and I just tell them what case I have and what cooler I'm running, and they usually give me the right ones. But you guys who are far away, you might wanna just grab all of them, all the different combinations of them, get them there, and then try them in place to make sure you're the correct ones in the hole. Other things you need to do is, I mean, make sure you run those little brass washers uh, that's an important part of it and for that you get your Volkswagen manual out figure out exactly where they go usually when you do get it right it just doesn't leak at all so either it pours the oil out or it doesn't leak so if you got it done and it doesn't leak and you have some remnant oil a little bit here and there dripping it's probably just from the old oil so usually it's not a real slow leak it's usually pretty massive now the other thing is your crankshaft seal leaks. I've seen a lot of people with crankshaft seal leaks and they put them on and they get another crankshaft seal leak and they never seem to get it right. Um, that's me sometimes every once in a while I get one that's really bad. But if you see here there's a little bit tiny bit of a groove and sometimes what happens that little tiny groove will line partly up with your new seal. So you want to make sure that you use a German red seal for the crankshaft and for the crankshaft seal and then you need to make sure that everything else is correct for the car you have um, so some guys 
know, there's different flywheels. There's the O-ring flywheel. There's non-O-ring flywheel. There's early flywheels, late flywheels. You need to have the right crankshaft for the right flywheel, and it needs to match up together. And I'm not the expert of knowing which one goes on, which exactly what year, and all that stuff. But I'm just making you aware that that needs to be correct. Um, because I think, let me look here. So if you notice this here, this does not have an O-ring. Let me get it close and really close here. Um, that is a, a little metal stair step in there. And that little metal stair step is for a early... 1500 or a um, or a 40 horse okay and so what some guys will do is they'll have the wrong they'll have a the wrong flywheel on and they'll put an o, try to put an o-ring in there or they'll put an o-ring flywheel on on an early crankshaft and it'll leak around here and they think that it's the crankshaft seal so like you see here how this is stair-stepped that is to match up with that particular flywheel so uh and if you have a 1600 usually they have an o-ring around them and then that has like a tapered end i believe on the on the crankshaft i don't recall exactly but you know i'm just like letting you know to be aware of these things and start looking in your manual and figure it out from there so for instance these have a paper gasket and then some of the other ones have like a metal gasket shim and then some of them have you know your other shims that go behind your things all see if it needs to be the correct stuff for the engine that you're building or trying to fix if you know what i mean so i've got some o-ring flywheels down there maybe pull one out so you can see there's a little i think this one has it there's a little slot in the flywheel for an o-ring usually the 200 millimeter flywheels have that and so that o-ring can go bad and it can think you can make you think it's a crankshaft seal leak um, but the most common thing is is that you'll have a little groove worn in here, okay? And when you put your new seal in, if that groove either has to line up exactly perfectly with the new seal or you need to have it in a completely different place. So if the groove's over here, you need to have the, the thing over here or just replace the flywheel. Because if it's like partly in that groove, uh, it'll start to, you know, kind of wobble a little bit and it'll start leaking. Actually, I think this one here is a bus 200. Uh, so this, they had a six volt 200 flywheels in the 1500 bus engine. And then they also had, uh, 180 flywheels with the six volt cars with the six volt ring gear. So there's a lot of different combinations. You need to kind of know what you have, kind of look up, look it up and, like I said, go in your manual, figure out what, you know, how it needs to match up correctly with the right crank, crank shaft. So, for instance, you look here at how much bigger that is. That's a 180. That's a 200. And they had 200 6 volt, 212 volt. The real difference is usually the size of the ring gear. And also, the later models had an O ring in that groove. The early models didn't. So. That's kind of how it works. I mean, I, I can't tell you all the little things. I'm not that expert guy, but I'm just telling you so you can kind of look it up yourself and figure it out from there. So on your case crack issue, uh, you know, generally you'll have a lot of oil coming out of the back of the engine. Maybe you've changed your, uh, the, oh, the seal. There's the seal for this one. Black seal, no good. We want the German red seals. So, um, maybe you've changed your seal back here. Oh, this actually probably is a German black seal, but anyway, early one, early, early one. So, maybe you've changed your seal back here. You've got all that stuff right, and you're still having leaks. A lot of times you can look really closely and look for those cracks coming from the oil gallery or galley here and here. They're usually somewhere in there. And if you've got a crack in there, pretty much that's pretty much it. You're going to have to replace the engine place the case at least which means pretty much you're gonna have to rebuild the whole engine again one of your issues again is a lot of times these push rod tube seals so you'll get a lot of cars they're older and they had the rubber push rod tube seals um, the newer gasket sets I don't know if I have one here don't think so but the newer gasket sets have like a neoprene uh, 
and they look the same. I mean, they're kind of an off-white color. The earlier ones were more whitish. The later ones, you know, that they make now are kind of more of an off-white color. And the newer ones are actually neoprene. They last a lot longer, and they leak a lot less. So the fix for it, if you're going to do it in the car, is to buy the uh, tubes that actually expand. But honestly, if it was me, I'd pull the engine out, pull the heads off, and then just put these, restretch these tubes here, and put new, put new push rod tube seals on it, and reassemble it. Um, those, a lot of times, those things, those ones that expand, that you have like a spring loaded. There's all different types of ones. Well, anyway, those types, I don't see one here, uh, but those types, a lot of times, they'll they'll leak between the two halves because I have like an O-ring inside here. I really don't like using those. That's like a last resort, you know cheap like if you were getting a car repaired in the shop when we used to work in the vw shop we used to do it that way because you know nobody wanted to pay us to take the take out the engine pull the heads off and replace the push rod tube seals they just wanted the one fix that was leaking you know it was just kind of a you know back back ass word way to do it to me it was just it just didn't make any sense now another thing i see people do is they go my engine's leaking from everywhere now if that's happening Let's go into what it might be. Usually my indicator is the back of the car as it goes will be just covered in little oil dots all over. And this could be the issues you might have. So VWs do not like a lot of RPMs on the freeway. I've had people tell me if you run your car at a higher RPM on the freeway, it runs cooler and all this stuff. You know, there's a, there's a limit to this. I'll give you the real quick theory on this. Um, some of these videos will overlap into others, but... What happens is when you reach, eventually what happens is you reach a, a pressure in your engine where, you know, the fan has done its thing. It's got enough pressure up to a certain point and you're actually starting to pressurize the engine. And then that back pressure from the fan starts to cause resistance in the engine and actually make it run hotter. So it's a balancing act of keeping the RPMs to the specific amount. I mean, I'm going to tell you that what I think the best RPMs are, VW RPMs, and it may not be the best for freeway, but like if your engine's running hot, what I've always found is if you just put it in like third gear, running at about between 20, 20, 200, and 2800 RPMs and just keep it cruising for a little while, It'll actually cool the engine down if it doesn't have issues with like jetting or something like that. Um, they'll generally cool down on their own. Uh, so it's just that happy medium of RPM. So I don't like to go up into the 3,500 3, to 4,000 RPMs on the freeway. If you're doing that, that might be a reason why you're doing getting this issue. So this here on this engine is a different type of a one there's a few different ones i was hoping he had the one on the back of the engine but he doesn't um this is a breather box and when you have a high performance engine it's absolutely necessary to have a breather box on your engine so a lot of the breather boxes have uh, are like this look kind of like this but they're located behind you put them behind your fan shroud and there's tubes that go from here down to your valve covers so it helps the engine get airflow going through it and makes a big difference uh, of, it, of it not building up crankcase pressure. So I've seen people go, man, my engine's just covered in oil. There's oil leaking out of behind this pulley. Um, usually it won't leak here. If especially the first thing I do is I grab the engine and I try and move this up and down. I've had them so loose that this thing moved up and down, and that was causing it to leak. But if it's not. If it's nice and tight and it doesn't have a lot of in play, then more than likely in play is going this direction. Okay. Uh, if it doesn't have a lot of in play, if it's in spec um, and it's leaking oil around here, that's a prime indicator you get building up crankcase pressure. Anytime you have a stroke or crankshaft, like what's in this one, or a counterweighted crankshaft, that crankshaft becomes a fan inside your engine in your crankcase and helps to build that pressure up. So you need to do a few things to compensate for that. Number one is like I have on this engine, I have the breather box behind and I have two hoses going down to the valve covers. And that's also, that has a little filter inside there. 
um, and it just helps to helps the engine breathe. The other thing I have uh, is on. So I ran it like that, and I didn't have. You see this road draft tube right here. I didn't have that. Now I was driving down the on the freeway, and I noticed those little dots on the back of my bus. And when I noticed those little dots, I realized that I was building up crankcase pressure. So I looked back here. I had some oil residue around this area and it indicated to me that I need to do something about that. So I changed and also added the road draft tube. So I have the road draft tube and the other. And this is a 1904. So it depends on the engine size. If you have a really big engine, you need a really big breather box. And there's guy, there's even things like, you know, you have to really get in your engineering and stuff like that. There's guys that add a PVC system to it. You can, I guess you can take the fuel pump off and there's a valve you can put on there somehow to help uh, make sure that it's gonna you know, in the correct flow. I mean, you gotta do your research, you gotta do your homework. Anytime you're doing an engine upgrade, you're doing all that stuff, you have to do the engineering yourself uh, to make it work right. It's just not, you don't just open up boxes and put up parts on when you start to get those big engines. So you gotta really do your homework, figure out stuff. I mean, a lot of people think, oh, well, I'm just gonna build myself a really big engine. I've never done it before, I'm gonna build it. But when you do that, you gotta get, Get in there and dig in and start reading stuff, you know, doing, you know, finding out what your homework is. When you get done, you're probably going to have some oil leaks. You're going to have some issues you're going to need to fix. And then figure out how, by using the crankcast breather system, whatever you need for your engine, uh, to work better. So, when you have that engine, if it's leaking from everywhere, especially when you're on the freeway, if you're just in town and it doesn't do it, but it seems like as soon as you get on the freeway, there's two different things is your engine RPMs on the highway. Maybe you're running too many RPMs. That's one thing. Uh, the other thing is, is maybe you have a performance engine and you need a breather system and because it's building up too much crankcase pressure. So again, like I said, if you're running, if you have a stock 1600, you have stock gears, stock tire size, you know, it's probably not gonna do that on the freeway. Uh, but if you start putting low profile tires, you're lower in your car, you start doing modifications, you know, you need to compensate for those modifications you did and, uh, you know, spend the money for the transmission gears so it's not revving up too high on the freeway. If it's revving up too high on the freeway, yeah, it's going to build up crankcase pressure. Yeah, you're going to have some issues you're going to need to take care of. So anyway, that's a little bit more about that. So again, this video isn't really intended to give you the answers to how to fix your own problem. Uh, but it's just going to give you some ideas of where to look if you have issues. And, you know, maybe some ideas of things that you should do. Like the push rod tubes. Take the heads off and just do them right. You know, here's those other kind. I just remember, I knew I had a set around here. These uh, are the expandable type ones like this. You know, the skates or scat ones. I think these ones are pretty good. But they still... Honestly, you know, they're just, to me, these things never, they don't work the same as the original stuff. So you pull them off, put those new seals on there, get the new ones. You see, this one had a paper or a aluminum gasket. And you need to have the correct stuff for your engine, whatever that is. So, you know, that's when I get on the phone with a parts guy. I ask him, I go, here, look, I have this crankshaft. I have, you know, this gland nut. Uh, you know, and I'm, you know, and this is what I'm trying to do, you know, then they make sure I have the right parts for it. As well as you could probably find a lot of that information in the Samba, but like I said, I'm not here to tell you all that stuff because I'm not the expert with that. But all I'm saying is that'll just give you food for thought to know where to look, to find the guys that can help you uh, on those websites to figure out how to, how to fix your oil leak. All right, so I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe. Hopefully this helps you get through some troubled times.